The weights of a certain dog breed are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 50 pounds and a standard deviation of 6.3 pounds. We're asked several questions. A, find the percentage of dogs that weigh less than 50 pounds. B, find the percentage of dogs that weigh less than 47 pounds. And C, find the percentage of dogs that weigh more than 47 pounds. Now, I don't wanna use my graphing calculator. I'm actually gonna do these by hand. And to start with, I'm gonna draw, ooh, not in red, I wanna do black. I'm gonna draw my standard normal curve to start, okay? To get us a visual as representation. And in that standard normal curve, I have a mean of 50 pounds. So I'm going to draw 50 pounds right there as my mean. And since my standard deviation is 6.3, that tells me if I go one standard deviation to the right, I have 56.3 pounds at that marker, and one standard deviation to the left would be 50 minus 6.3, or 43.7 pounds here on the left. So let's look at question A. Question A asks us to find the percentage of dogs that weigh less than 50 pounds. If we look at our standard normal deviation, we notice 50 pounds is actually our mean right here in the middle. And we are looking for the percentage of dogs that weigh less than 50 pounds. In other words, we're looking for the area under the curve to the left of 50 pounds, right? So what percentage of the curve is shaded right now left of 50 pounds? Well, isn't that just 50% of the curve? It is. 50% of the curve corresponds to the percentage of dogs that weigh less than 50 pounds. Oh, and I don't need that percent because it's already there, so I could erase that percent. Okay, perfect. So let's look at question B. Find the percentage of dogs that weigh less than 47 pounds. Hmm, 47 pounds. Now, where's 47 pounds on my picture? Notice 47 pounds is about here. That's 47 pounds. And I want to know what percentage of dogs fall below 47 pounds. So I want the red shaded area this time. Well, it's not on a standard deviation, so I can't use my empirical rule. Instead, I'm going to have to use my z-table and the area under the curve. But in order to use the z-table and those scores, I first need a z-value, and I don't have a z-value. So my job is going to be finding a z-value. This is where we need to pull up that formula. Do you remember that formula? We have a formula that says x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation is actually equal to our z-score, right? z is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So let's actually calculate the z-value that corresponds to 47 pounds. So 47 is my x-value. My standard, excuse me, my mean is 50 and my standard deviation is 6.3. So to calculate my z-score corresponding to 47 pounds, I would get 47 minus 50, and that's negative three divided by 6.3. So if I divide that by 6.3, that gives me negative 0 0.4761, etc., etc., etc. So the z score that corresponds to 47 pounds is actually negative 0 0.4769. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Why? Because our mean is where the z value is zero, right? And one standard deviation to the left is where our z value is negative one. Thus, 
Our z value here, which is just about halfway between negative 1 and 0, is about negative 0 0.47 or about negative 0.5, right? So that makes sense in our picture. So our z score is 0, negative 0 0.47619. We're going to use this z-score and look on our chart. When we look on our chart, remember, our z-values are actually rounded to the nearest hundredth, or two decimal places. So I'm going to round this z-value two decimal places over, and I'm going to get negative 0 0.4. And I'm going to put, I'm actually going to round it down. Whether you round it down or up is not going to matter, but I want to make sure that I include all of them. So if I round to 44.8, that's going to put me just slightly under. So either way, Mayupin math is, is not as particular. I'm going to particularly for this moment going to round down, okay? You could also put 0 0.48, all right? Again, this is just an approximation right now, but we're going to do the best we can with what we have. All right, so I'm going to look for the z-score of negative 0 0.47, and I'm going to go to my z-table to do this. So on my z-table, I'm looking for a z-value of negative 0 0.47. And where do I see z being negative? Well, we don't, but we remember that the area to the right and to the left of the mean is the same. So I'm going to look for 0 0.47. 7, and when I get that column matched with that row, it's giving me the z-score right here of 0 0.18082, 0 0.18082, 0 0.18, I'm going to write that number down, 0 0.18082 was my number. This was the area number that corresponds to a z-score of negative 0 0.47. What is that area, though? That area is actually the area in between the z-value and the mean, right? So the area is actually that yellow area. That represents eight, about 18.082%. Of my total curve. That's that area. So if we are looking to get, now I need to erase a little more here because now I have a lot of stuff on my chart, but if I'm looking to get the red area, to get the red area, I have to use my yellow area, and my yellow area is given to be 0 0.18082, or if I like, 18.082%, okay? And I need that area to get my red area, and do you see what we have to do? Do you see how we have this yellow area and we need to get the red area? What do we know in the bigger context? In the bigger context, we know that the left half of the curve is 50%. And so if I have 50% of the curve shaded, if I take away or remove the yellow band, I'll be left with the red band. So that means if I take 50% of my curve, on the left side, so that's the left side, 50%, and I subtract off it the yellow band of negative 18.082%, that's going to give me a total of 32, oh no, Tina, hang on, I think I'll pull my calculator out because I didn't subtract that backwards, correct, let me do this out so I don't mess this up. If I subtract 50 minus 18.082%, that's going to give us... That's going to give us 31.918%. This is the part that represents the red area on my curve. 
31.918%. That is how much is shaded here on the red side. It's 50% on the left, take away the yellow band. The yellow band came by looking at our z-score of negative 0.47 on that z-table. So rounding my answer to the nearest tenth tells me that I have in the red area 31.9% of the area being less than 47 pounds. Our last question. Find the percentage of dogs that weigh more than 47 pounds. Well, since the total area under my curve is 100%, right? Since the total area under the curve is 100%, if 31.9% is less than 47 pounds, that would mean if I take 100% and I subtract 31.90, that's going to tell me the total leftover that's greater than 47 pounds, right? So if 31.9 is on the left side of my z-score, then 68.10% is on the right side of my z-score. So that means that the percentage of dogs that weigh more than 47 pounds has to be 68.1%. Whew, lots of tongue tying there. I hope this makes sense. If you do have any questions, please let me know. And again, you might, if you had chosen, I just want to point out, you could have also chosen negative 0.48 on your Z-table score, and it's going to give you slightly different answers, and that's okay. My open math should take both of these. All right, good luck, and do let me know if you have any questions.